Okay. <clears throat> now, as usual, I've uh, uh, rewritten everything in the, between the last video and this, and uh, changed everything about that class. <laughs> but um, the uh, the great thing is that um, I discovered. Uh, that we don't need to maintain any list of strings or anything that you can actually extract the string from the menu which I, I had hoped would be possible um, not only because it simplifies things but because um, it conforms with um, what I would guess would call what I would call one of the fundamental uh, rules of programming uh, that, uh, that one should always abide by. And that rule is uh, never, ever, 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 never uh, maintain two copies of the same data. Never. Unless you absolutely can't avoid it, in which case, uh, what can you do? Well, we, we can avoid it, well, in this case, because uh, we can get the string from the menu. And so, therefore, we don't need to maintain two copies of those same strings. Thank goodness. And that solves that problem. So we can never go wrong with the string. Uh, the second thing, so looking at that class, now there, <laughs> I'm sure there's more to rewrite, but another thing I found was that there's a way to convert from, um, I think I, I mentioned at the end there, to convert from those command messages to um, a position in the in the menu, like a zero base position, and uh, well, this one's going the other way. <coughs> Where's the one? Well, as far as the Positioning that I'm doing. Um, first, uh, I, I change this create so that uh, it takes like a base ID number, and then when you add things to the uh, menu, uh, it just adds. It takes uh, the next number and on and on, like an like an array sort of thing. So that allows me to have a plus equals type thing. Now it turns out that you can all of these things, and I didn't know until recently, but things like uh, if you want to delete an item. You can delete it by position or by ID. Uh, similarly, adding <laughs> uh, let's see now. So I saw that I saw that flag before. Oh, get string. Now you can get the string uh, value out of a menu. From if you knew its position by using this flag, or if you knew its ID by using this flag. Well, we know the IDs, uh, and we know that uh, when we're adding things, uh, you see, I'm add string. Yet I can get the item count and I can add the base number, and so that generates an identifier. 
number and also gives me a way to convert back and forth from one to the other. So that's two things. Important things. Lastly, and most important of all, I think, is that there's a way to, do, to call this track pop-up menu thing and have no in a silent way so that n nothing goes into the wind falls into the wind prop and that's what I want to do when I'm using a separate menu here here I'm using a, a separate menu right and I don't know I don't want WM commands falling into the wind prop and getting the two menus confused so I use the silent version, and the silent version just returns the identifier of the thing selected. <coughs> I said true here, but I really mean something other than zero. And uh, it's only going to return uh, one, but there's only one selection. Um, and on failure, it always returns return zero, so I wouldn't want to let the uh, starting index be zero, or else I couldn't tell the difference between the selected and the uh, cancel. So, so I can choose one here for the identifier, any number, and it won't conflict with anything else because it's never going to go through the wind prop. So now, oh, and I also solved that other problem. I didn't really solve it. I, I tracked down some old code that I knew I had that dealt with that problem of uh, that, you know, getting getting rid of the, this thing. So. Here I can still do all this stuff. That works the same. Okay. Uh, exit. Um, I can still do that. If it's minimized, I can get away from it. That doesn't really do anything. There's no way to bring it back. But I can simply close the program. And uh, so now that brings us to the final stage where tray test is going to become a program. And uh, therefore, so the most important thing now is to choose an icon. And I've got so many icons. Right. I, I did a bunch of extracting of icons and, and stupidly I deleted actually that, that I think is my preferred one uh, that's in here too at the top there's so many in here, 7,000. Uh, but there, there were all these tiny ones, and I deleted all the tiny ones, forgetting that it's, it's only going to be a tiny one anyway that we're going to use. Yeah, th this doesn't look too bad either, I think. And this one has color, so it's a difficult choice. I think I'd like to see how this colorful one looks, but it doesn't have a pencil or anything. There might be one in there that has a pencil. This has a pencil, but it's not colored. The one I really want to use, <laughs> if I can find it, would be perfect if only I could turn it into a mirror image of itself. Where I wonder where it went. 
It will let you the top of this. No. I know it's in here some somewhere. And, and what it is is it it's basically the start menu. But in the same orientation like that. But I want to flip it. And of course I've got that great uh, program, GIMP, and I <laughs> still can't figure that uh, program out. I have no idea. But, you know, like, I wonder where it is. Where it is. Oh. Show up. Hang on, I'm going to find it. Okay, here it is. See? Now, put on underscore in front. Bring it up to the top. Go on, go on. Okay. Now, see, if it's going to be on this side, I want it to be a mirror image. Well, that should be easy enough because I've got this great icon editor called GIMP. I just double clicked this. So that means that GIMP is, uh, <coughs> in theory, is loading up. Maybe I'll pause again. Just thought I'd give you an update on the GIMP progress. It's been about four or five minutes now. And um, it's, uh, I think it's on stage seven of the uh, startup process. Oh, now, now we're at extensions. Okay, well, I'll pause again. Okay, here we are. Now, there's nothing like an intuitive, easy to use program like GIMP. Now, what I would like to do is uh, make a, just turn it into a mirror image. Take all of these pictures and make them a mirror image. I'm not sure what this one is. I don't know if I can zoom in or pray. Alright. Now, let's see now, tools, I can swap colors, uh, auto, I don't think auto is this good, now there's invert, uh, Transform, rotate, no, I don't, okay, now flip, and that would seem to do it. Let's try it. Ooh, now maybe that worked. Did it flip all of them? No, it only flipped the one that I had selected. Okay, but that's okay, let's select the next one and do the same thing. How did I, what did I do there? I forget where it was. Yeah, so it's not. Where was that? Layer. Here. Well, let's assume that that worked. It's that's it in that tiny little corner there. Is there a key to do it? Okay, it's transform, no key. But keep trying. Eight, seven, layer transform. Left. Six. Land. Six. Left. 
I didn't find this one before I got lucky. Two. One. Okay. So All right. Now, actually, this is the one I want. I don't like this. Be speckling. Can I zoom in? Can't tell. So I'm not speckling. That one's not speckling. No, it's that. Okay, that's good. That doesn't seem to do anything. Okay. Seems to be missing a size. Uh, okay, the, the speckly ones are gone. Now it's simply a matter of trying to save it. Now this is, we gotta be careful here. One of these saves is the wrong one. Well, let's just try a regular. Uh -oh. I think I just overwrote that. <laughs> XCF, and no, I don't want that. Okay. Windows PL. I don't want that either. Save is not, okay, it's not save. It's uh, export. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, I don't want to put it there. Let's put it here. Safety. Now, where is this pre? There's supposed, to, there's supposed to be a preview. Well, I don't know. Let's see what, what happens. Maybe I have to preview. Oh, okay. Now, that, those aren't selected, and I don't. Oh, I want this one. P. Oh, this, 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 this. I want all the clear looking ones. Now, what about this? 32. Do I want 51? 8 bits or 30? Maybe. Maybe this should be 32. 
so that they're all the same. No power. I don't want a power. I think I want power. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay. It certainly looks like an icon. Now, if that worked, now, if that worked, okay, it's only up to 48, but we don't care. It's only going to be this size anyway. The next step is now we want to take our test and turn it into um, uh, a real pro or our the final product. That's this. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, and it's what was it called? A uh, uh, quick quick list. Quick list. Let me just grab this. Put in the utility. Um, I could, I could uh, swap out the icon first, maybe. Let's do that first. All right, but then I remember. Then uh, here, and tutorial CP. So here it is. This name. We'll add that. We'll add it. Take this one. This way, clean everything, build. <coughs> So uh, if if this uh, icon thing, thing is successful, then uh, the last step is to implement the uh, um, well the main feature of the program, which is uh, to do its thing. 
That's actually the easiest part. I think. I didn't really need to clean all that, did I? Okay, okay. Now that problem has to do, I think, with the PNG. I think I gotta change this and unclick PNG so it'll just save them as bitmap. Pause again. Okay, now I, I don't know what happened. Because that icon, well, maybe it just ignores the fact that it's uh, huge. But uh, look, there it is. It's got the right icon. And it's nice and big here. And how's it going to work in the system tray? Well, I, there was one, there was still one compre compressed, uh, oh, that's pretty good. Okay, and look, it's, yeah, it's pretty, so it's a backwards, one of these things. Now. First thing is what, how we're going to store the paths. And, um, and I would suggest to use the registry so we can just derive from it. Now the registry has a thing for storing string lists and, and, and I also have another thing for storing string lists um, in my other registry class and I don't think I copied it in here maybe I guess not. The, the thing that I use for making string lists doesn't use the, the built-in one, and uh, I made I did it that way just just because I thought the code would translate easier to another another thing like an any file or something. So what I can do again is pause again and try and bring that code. Over here. Okay. <clears throat> Seem to compile with some changes. So now I have get string list, which takes a key, like a key value, <clears throat> and re and we pass a reference to a list of strings, and uh, it gets a not and put this in reverse. Okay. Now we can just test that that works on its own. Maybe a good idea to do that. Mm 
Okay. Bridge and testing with my uh, recent file list. No. File list. And then we need a list of strings. Use the you know anyway uh, file Just in case. This one looks like a path. Whatever. So if no arguments, we'll put the list locally. Now, I made a mistake somewhere, so it can't go out. This is the key. Oh, I did I give it a name? Yeah, file name.
No argument. Okay. This may seem like a diversion, but we absolutely need to be able to save and, re and retrieve our lists, our files. True enough. <clears throat> no, it's going to be in the current user software. Here, I think. Here. Should show up in here under U test. Let me just get rid of it. Oh my! So not you to maybe this key. That's the name of the key. All right. We add a few things to a list. The elements put stir list. I'm just gonna step over. It. Let's see what happens. Okay, see how it, it just puts them in as string values. So this is the, uh, n normally I would just have an entry called file list and you double click and you get a list. But this has the same effect. So it worked. Now retrieving them. I am here. That should bring us here. I'm just going to step over. And do this. That's the three elements. And there they are. So now we can save and restore a list given a, a, a key and an identifier. Uh, you'll note that if I change this list, uh, change it completely, add an extra entry. that um, it should still work. Well, if we get, we'll get what we thought before. So, change it to cut. And if I run through it, oh dear. So well, this code is not completely tested.
What's it supposed to be? Okay, well that that's something I gotta figure out. This is a brand new code and uh, needs to be double checked. Probably probably it would be okay if I deleted it. Right like that. Yeah. So it, it's supposed to go through and delete all these and then just overwrite uh, with what was passed in. And obviously the the deleting part has got an error somewhere. And I'm building up this name. PC name. I have, I have better methods of, to do this sort of thing. Now and then four. Okay. Okay, well, let me uh, work on that. And uh, I won't upload this yet. I'll complete that bit and uh, add it to our, our project for the load. And uh, then, then I have to show you how to, how the open file dialog works.